Hello and welcome to a very special Build with Bear workshop. My name is Pat Bear and I'm here to build a model kit and to hang out with you. Uh, there is more of a delay than normal, uh, so I apologize for that. Um, let me know. Uh, turn mic up very low. This is F Tong. Okay. Uh, audio slow. How is this? Is the audio better now? Let me know. I'm throwing the bear cave leg of the scythe boat in the chat. Um, if the audio is better, please let me know. I am running off my laptop and all my settings are weird because um, they have to be because it's my laptop and my laptop's kind of old. Uh, I'm right now, this webcam, just this webcam is only using 21% of uh of my cpu okay you're so uh, uh last brook no difference i turned it up so it's still very quiet is that is that what you're all are saying is that uh is this just not okay so let's see if i can boost stuff here i'm gonna boost Uh, how is that? I have now boosted my audio. My, uh, so let me know. Better. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, for folks that don't know, um, I am, uh, currently in the process of getting ready to move out of state. Uh, Aristophan just subscribed for 22 months on 22 months. Thanks for the stream. Aristophan, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm pointing because the, usually the camera is right in front of me, but the camera is over here because I'm on my laptop. Uh, hi, Surfing Ninja. Welcome, welcome. Lord Crash that's here. Um, oh, you got a cool emote. That's awesome. Good for you, Lashbrook. Uh, but yeah, how's audio right now? Because I, you know, this is the intro portion, so it's always nice to have that. Uh, Lord Crashington, uh, says, uh, nice shirt, Pat. Yeah, this is, uh, I got fired. Uh, this is the, uh, Heath Miller, uh, formerly Heath Slater parody shirt that he, official shirt that he put out on, uh, Pro Wrestling Tees, uh, because he did indeed get fired. Uh, the shirt he had in WWE said, I got kids. This is it. Uh, still no, uh, no core Gundam update. Okay. Thank you for the update, Serving Ninja. Um, uh, FT, uh, I am going to South Carolina. My folks retired there, uh, a, a number of years ago, um, and I uh, made, uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm leaving New York to go there for a while. Um, I, uh, I had plans to be able to rough it out here in New York until uh, things got to a place where I could, uh, you know, safely work um, in the industry that I love, which is uh, theater. Um, but that is not uh, on the, uh, in the cards. Uh, part of that is because my roommate moved out. And I was unable to find a new roommate, so I was paying double the rent, which really shrunk my timeline of being cool with staying in New York and paying rent for New York while I was doing the kind of work I can do anywhere. So I'm going to South Carolina. Uh, I shipped my PC there, y'all. My desktop, which I filled with packing material and cut and wrapped in shirts and put in a big box with lots of clothing and packing material. I shipped my desktop. Uh, and then I also shipped two monitors. Uh, but the monitors are very inexpensive. One was free. One was a gift. So if I have to buy new monitors, I'll buy new monitors. But, uh, so right now I'm running off my laptop, which is a decent Alienware, but not the best. And uh, I have an old TV, which I'm using as my second monitor. Surfer Ninja, I hope you get that support you need. Uh, that you gotta get that. You gotta get your stuff. Um, so we got the Crossbone Gundam here, uh, which I'm excited to work on. So um, that's gonna be fun. Uh, I did want to say, uh, so uh, in order to keep my CPU usage low on my laptop and make sure that everything's working okay, um, I am currently. Uh, using just the webcam and then on here and then one webcam on the overhead, which we'll go to there. Now, uh, on the first, I go to an Airbnb for a couple days before I go to South Carolina. So when I go to the Airbnb, unless the room I'm in has a TV that I can use as a second monitor, I will be going down to one monitor, which should be fine for the two streams I'm gonna be doing there. Now, I should also point out, I might not be able to do two streams when I'm uh, these two streams I'd like to do 
on July 2nd and July 4th. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do those streams because I will be at an Airbnb and I won't know till I get there. Um, but the 6th, I will be in South Carolina. Uh, I will have, if I don't have my desktop by then, I should have my desktop by then. If there's any issues with my desktop, I'll have my laptop. I've streamed from uh, the house there before. Uh, uh, also, if you hear an echo, I apologize for that echo. That is because uh, this room is kind of empty. And so things bounce around a little bit. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, let's see. Let's, uh, I'm going to retweet my tweet. Uh, try to get uh, let people know we're in here. Um, first and foremost, if you were here on Tuesday, thank you so much. I had uh, such a lovely turnout on Tuesday. And it was so nice. Uh, if you missed it, there's the, the VOD is here on uh, on my Twitch. And the archive is on my YouTube. It was my birthday stream because Tuesday was my birthday. And it was really fun. I played Jackbox games. I had some friends join me in Discord. Um, it was a really, really nice time. So this is the Crossbone Gundam. Let me see. Get that lined up in the middle. This is where we're going to build. This is the crossbone. So we've completed the upper portion. We completed one leg. We're going to work on the other leg. Then we're going to work on the core fighter, which is the vehicle that goes into the back to become the cockpit, basically. And then the X on the back of it. And then the weapons. I don't know if we'll finish it up today. We might finish it up today, but at the very uh, least, we're going to get towards the end. One thing I wanted to point out, which we did at the very end of the last stream, which is on Monday was I want to point out the back of the leg here. Now, the back of the leg here, there's a, a piece that goes in that you may not know is where that's this is the handle for the beam saber. And it lives in the ankle, or the leg, I should say, not the ankle, it's the leg. And that is fun. Um, I like the placement. I often like, uh, you know, I think the skirt is a good place to put those things, but... Back of the leg just pops out, and then we go. Sorry, I'm, uh, as I said, I'm using my laptop. Uh, hey, fun fact, my laptop webcam does not have it built in Zoom. And software Zoom doesn't work either. So I cannot zoom in on this webcam. It, it, I have to physically move my laptop. So I have my laptop as close to poss as possible without being in the shot so that I am not too far away from y'all. Um, uh, things are weird, and as I said, if I do two streams at the Airbnb I'm going to, um, it will be weird there as well. All right, so we'll put this. Oh, where we're gonna put this? We'll put this over. We'll put this here, so you can see it as as I work here. That's good. That way you can keep an eye on what's going on with the build. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are you. I am uh, streaming at 720p. I have. Uh, I am not forcing my webcam to be uh, 16 by 9. Because when I did that, my CPU usage uh, in my test stream went up to 70% CPU usage. And then there was a warning message that was just like, this is not good. And I was like, you are right. This is not good. So made the call to, uh, to just drop down into what I'm using right now, which I think is fine. Uh, is this ideal? No. But I am still being able to stream. Uh, and I should be able to stream uh, with no problems on Saturday, which is my uh, my next stream. Um, Saturday night will be my next build stream. And then I will have a uh, stream on Monday. Uh, considering everything looks good. Thank you, Ristavan. I appreciate that. Um, uh, on Monday, I will have a stream. And then uh, next Tuesday, I'm going to do a bonus stream because I'm moving out of here on Wednesday. Uh, and I didn't want to do, I don't want to deal with that. So Tuesday night, uh, I'm going to play Hearthstone because that is an easy game for me to stream. Uh, it is not hard for me to stream Hearthstone, um, with this current setup, uh, should not be a problem. Uh, I can do Hearthstone even without this TV. So worst comes to worst, no problem. Um, and then, you know, the nice thing is that. Uh, at the Airbnb, even if I don't have uh, television access so, or, or another monitor, if I can't borrow a monitor, um, you know, I just have to make uh, this stuff small and OBS works fine and I can still read chat. Um, it, it does make things a little more complicated, um, but not very complicated. 
Um, and I will have the equipment I need and all that uh, because I'm flying out on the 5th and I have uh, I have a large suitcase that I'm putting uh, a few electronics, but also all my building gear so I didn't have to mail that stuff. Um, and uh, I did have somebody ask me, he's like, why are you, why aren't you, because you're getting a storage unit, Pat, why aren't you putting your desktop into storage? And honestly, the main reason is uh, I'm always afraid that this laptop is just going to go, gonna stop working. Um, so the idea of using this laptop for months and months as my primary uh, uh, work uh, and, you know, all my work and my streaming and filming stuff and all that. And then my regular use. No, thank you. Uh, can't do that. Cannot be asked to do that. So instead, I will use. Uh, um, instead, I will uh, I, I will continue to use my laptop as my. Uh, uh, as like my backup for when I'm doing other things and, and getting things ready. Uh, this is too tall here. And that'll be good. Is this H5? Is that H? That was H5. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just... So here's the thing, right? Does it cost a bit of money to mail all the, you know, uh, a desktop PC? And uh, yes. Would it cost more to replace my laptop, which I would need a computer to do the things I want to do while I am, uh, you know, uh, in NY or in South Carolina? Yeah, it would be more expensive to replace that. Am I taking a risk? Of course I am. I am certainly taking a, uh, a pretty substantial risk in uh, taking my laptop uh, with me to uh to south carolina or not to uh mailing my my desktop uh certainly cost a chunk of change uh not gonna lie about that uh was not the most inexpensive thing that i have done uh as part of moving um i uh, i will say this i i didn't spend much more for the airbnb i'm staying at than i did for the uh uh, than to mail two pretty big boxes uh, with like five day ground shipping um, to South Carolina. Uh, I, I will say this. I got a very good deal in the Airbnb I'm staying at. It is in a neighborhood kind of close to where I am, which was great because it means that uh, I will take my stuff here to, um, to my uh, storage unit, which is like one borough over. I'll go to my storage unit, move that stuff there, and then uh, be able to move that stuff back. Or then I'll be able to like come back, clean up, and then walk. I've never had to mail a desktop PC, but I'm not sure how much of a fan I am putting packing material in the case. Yeah, Lastbrook, uh, I used um, uh, um, uh, so there are there are, there's foam people people use like. Like uh, expandable foam pieces, I, I used the the, the the nicest uh plastic packing material stuff I had, like um heavier uh packing material, not the not the kind of bubble, not even bubble wrap, not the kind of bags that you get uh from like Amazon. These are higher quality uh things that shouldn't break under uh uh they might move under pressure, but they shouldn't uh like rip under pressure is what I'm trying to say. Um, and that will be, that should theoretically um, protect uh, things. Okay, I remember having an issue putting this piece in the last time, so we'll see. Uh, oh, I'm not doing that. Uh, this is a, a fun, this is not a spam, I don't think this is a spam email. I'm going to, uh, I don't think this is a spam email, but I am going to tell you what it says. No, I mean, this is definitely a spam email. What am I saying? Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this, this is an Indiegogo spam email. Um, hey, Pat, uh, let me go to the, this. We're going to take a momentary break while I read this. 
Hey Pat, I came across your impressive profile online and understand you're helping entrepreneurs and business owners succeed. Am I? Uh, I was wondering if you'd be interested in our efforts to help fund Rainforest Expansion, expanding private Amazon Rainforest Preserve. We launched our project in Indiegogo. Check it out here. A unique opportunity to protect the Amazon Rainforest and get to know it better than anyone. This is... This person is going to tell me about these entrepreneurs doing their thing. Um, I'd like to let you all know, while I respect entrepreneurs uh, and people out there doing their thing, um, I am not currently uh, helping entrepreneurs and business owners succeed. Yes, my impressive online uh, profile. Um, if anything, did I put up my PayPal link in my t Twitter today? Because I was like, if anybody wanted to get me a birth, forgot about my birthday and wanted to get me something, they could just give me some money to help me with my move. Did I do that today? Yes, I did. Um, I did that today. And like, whatever. So, uh, I'm currently not helping entrepreneurs. I'm retweeting a lot of people and helping where I can. Um, I follow several. I give one dollar to several different Patreons. Uh, I do that. I don't know if that's what they mean. I don't know if that's what they're looking for. But yeah, I don't. It was one of those things where, like, that's definitely spam, but it was, like, a different kind of spam than I originally thought it was. Uh, I thought it was, we have a business opportunity instead of, we are cold emailing you about uh, about this Indiegogo, which may or may not be a scam. That's a different kind of scam. Oh, yeah, let's go back to the, sorry, I forgot. We're building again. I was doing that dramatic reading. Uh, yeah, so I'm nervous about mailing my PC and... Put, uh, certainly my desktop. I, I'm certainly nervous about it. But also, if I have to do uh, some fundraising efforts or borrow some money to, in order to um, fix my computer after it's already gotten there, that's still, even doing that, will still be cheaper than replacing my laptop uh, in a few months when it finally is like, I can't do this anymore. Because that is coming. This laptop is does not like to be a primary uh, thing. This is a secondary thing. This is like, oh, I take the work and I kind of use it. Or this is, oh, I'm going to a convention or I'm flying or, you know, whatever. And, you know, also I don't really need that it for that that much. Anyway, these days. Like I have, I don't know, I'm probably going to go to New York for a convention this year. Like, I think I have one convention left in me because I don't know. Like, I don't know if uh, my assumption is that New York Comic Con um, and uh, is going to happen. That is my that is my assumption is that New York Comic Con is is going to is going to take place um, beyond that. I don't know. And I will come up to work New York Comic Con if I'm not ready to move back to New York at that point because I don't know if I'll be ready or not to do that. But if I'm not ready to move back to New York uh, for, for New York Comic Con, I'll at least come up to it for um, uh, for events. Yeah, because everything's kind of up in the air. Like, right now, I, I have goals. I can say that. I have goals for when I am uh, uh, staying with folks with my folks and uh, part of those goals are uh, refilling the bank account, refilling the nest egg, refilling, you know, doing, taking care of that, paying maybe less than my absolute minimums when it comes to my, my debt, uh, trying to pay up my debt some, uh, pay off my debt, I should say, uh, I pay it up, pay it off. Um, that's a, certainly a, a consideration. Um, I would like to do that at some point. Um, uh, I am going to renew my or get a new driver's license because I let mine expire years ago. And so since I will be with my folks, I'll have access to a car so I can 
get my driver's license again. So that'll be good to have and good for future stuff. And I can transfer it to New York when the time comes. So that'll be good. So I, I plan on doing that. Um, let's see what else. Yeah. You know, so there's that. There's that, you know, like. Um, yeah, I mean, those are those are kind of the main things is, is uh, renew things, get some get some work uh be in a position to be able to uh come back to new york and survive in new york for a while while i have some other stuff and then also like you know i've always been interested in in other places uh and will I, i've always had a willingness to to try other opportunities in other spots um uh and not having a place where I'm paying rent, the idea of like, you know, accepting a job somewhere in some other city, like, well, if I've got to like send my key to my Airbnb to my storage unit to a trusted friend and ask them to ship the contents of there or throw away the contents therein, sure, I'll do that. Like, uh, I'm not saying that I have like the place that I'm going to be storing stuff in. It's not like inexpensive. It's it's a it's a good deal, but it's not like uh, it's still money. I'm still spending money in order to keep stuff here uh, because I do intend to come back. But also like yeah, if I'm only there, you know, a couple months from now, if it looks like I've got an opportunity to move somewhere and I can just send for my things, uh, I will. I'll be happy to do that or drive up from South Carolina, pick up the stuff in New York or fly to South Carolina, pick up the stuff in New York, drive it to a play, the new place, whatever. Like, sure. I got options. Um, I'm trying to stay positive. I love New York, but also uh, I don't love this version of New York right now. Right now, the New York that I live in, I don't particularly love because it is not uh necessarily my favorite version of New York what with all of the immense total shutdown of all of the things that I love about it it's a weird New York uh, and we're wondering if some of that stuff's going to come back the way we would like it to we don't know um Uh, a place that I've worked at here that uh, obviously is not currently uh, hiring any, or d is not doing theater. It's a theater. They're not doing any shows. Uh, they're doing some online stuff, but they're not doing anything, um, uh, you know, with a paying live audience, and, you know, going out to a, a venue. Um, they are looking to, uh, basically, they were like, Huh. Our staff is very white and very straight. We probably need to reevaluate that. And oh, weird. One of the reasons why that is um, is because uh, a lot of folks in my industry um, were able to work for nothing for a very long time because they had nest eggs, because they had support, um, because they had someone was paying their rent at first or whatever, they were able to intern and learn on the job and in some instances get paid very little uh, in order to get better and then eventually at some point be able to get a little bit of a living, but sometimes not even that. Um, the tech field is, uh, particularly live theater stuff, is very white and happens to be also very straight. Um, and, uh, it is, uh, like at this point, uh, my hope is that we can be part of that for change, changing that. Um, and if that means that the opportunities that I've been given, the opportunity I was given to work at a place, uh, isn't going to be renewed in the future, it's like, okay, yeah.
mean, it was a it was a fun side gig. It was a fun little extra gig. It was mostly about like keeping my skills up and doing what I needed to do. And I really appreciated the opportunity. And it forced me to learn some tech that I didn't so te technology I wasn't super familiar with um, because they had some standards of software they like to use that I didn't particularly enjoy using. And I need to, to learn how to use it. I came to, I've come to appreciate Keynote, even though I don't think it's great software. I've come to appreciate it. Um, and, uh, but mostly, like, yeah, I mean, if there's somebody who is, you know, from a marginalized group that can learn uh, valuable skills and work at a theater and, and feel that kind of, like, love for the craft and for being able to help people make cool shit and do cool shit. If I can help with that, that sounds awesome. Uh, we'll see. We'll see where I, what happens and where I end up uh, in, in my current situation. Um, I'm still hopeful to find something uh, you know, the hope is that I can work, you know, without being in a room full of people. Uh, the area of South Carolina I'm going to um, certainly has, uh, like, it is, it's in the South, right? It's in the South, so... People are... Um, are out and about eh, for better or worse. And the first, they'll call it a second wave, but it is still just the first wave. And so, you know, that's, it's a thing. Um, yeah, Lord Crash did makes a, a, you know, a smart observation, um, uh, a very true observation. It's not a great time to be in industries relying on people coming to a place that aren't essential. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, the arts, like we are already seeing in New York a downturn in live theater in 2020. Like the, the 2019 and 2020 was not tracking great. Um, there were just, there was a lot going on and the recession was hitting and people were, or had been hitting even more. And people were not, were cutting back on, on live shows. Um, so that was already happening. And, you know, there are people that can't wait to get to their hairstylist. And there are people who can't wait to get to the movies. And there are people who can't wait to see stand-up. But I think that, and, and other live forms of theater, I mean, God, there were, AEW just had friends and family. Uh, they, you know, they've been doing that. They're going to scale back a bit, hopefully now, um, because they shouldn't be doing that shit. But yeah, there were people... You know, that are like, uh, there was a uh, a wrestling show in um, New York State, or yeah, uh, that everyone was watching from their cars, and it's like, okay, but also stop it. Chuck E. Cheese is filing for bankruptcy. A local place I see an occasion just became a pizza place during shutdown, which nobody would go there for just pizza. Yeah, yeah, I mean like. It's a rough time for entertainment. Uh, people are 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 figuring it out. They're trying to figure out how they can support people and how they can continue to to enjoy themselves and figure that stuff out. Like productions are gonna rev up in some ways. Uh, you're, I'm starting to see. I'm starting to see LA based YouTube channels. You're starting to see maybe like come back when not just do stuff in their apartments and not just do stuff on Zoom. And you're starting to see like people in a room with a digit with like this other person's running the camera for a computer in the next room. And you're like, OK, I hope everyone's being cool and doing their thing. Like I know that like uh critical role is coming back and it's like okay please be safe and cool because uh it th that means a lot to people but also it is entertainment for folks and nobody should die 
so that I so that I could, you know so that people get their fun uh dice based you know like D and D game again like that's not that shouldn't be a priority for people in my opinion like it's cool if it you know like I like the stuff I like and I like when it happens but you know I also want people to be safe and cool I look at uh I don't know Um, primarily I'll say this, if you're out there doing stuff, just please, please wear a mask, you know, just take, take care of yourself, take this opportunity to, to renew your own self-interest and your own self-worth. Uh, I mean, you're wearing a mask to help other people, but you're also conveying the need for it. And you're reminding people, they're like, oh, yeah, 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 masks. And then hopefully it benefits you as well. I don't understand. We had so much. We have so, so much superhero uh, stuff. And we didn't. And Lucha. God, Lucha rules. We've known Lucha rules for so long. We just, for some reason... Just decided, like the amount of people that love like a Rorschach. How did how did we decide that masks weren't cool? Boggles. Um finished the guild's D&D sessions and they managed to do it all via Zoom calls, which meant some issues, but overall a good substitute for in-person shows. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, people are going to figure that stuff out. Uh, people that have time and energy are going to make that stuff work. Uh, doing live stuff like that has been r tough for people and they've already, you know, like I, I think about like uh, Dimension 20, those folks are already in a rough spot because, you know, like college humor is basic and dropout stuff is like done. Uh, Sam has some rights to some things, but he's not a billionaire. He's not, you know, an investment firm. He's a guy trying to make deals. And now it's like, well, you know, whatever space they were using in L.A., it's like, forget that. And, uh the um, uh, the Drawfee crew in New York was like going to one of their apartments once a week to film stuff. And now they're just doing it. They have to all do it remotely, which is hasn't been terrible for them. But it also means that like they all have other projects. They're all trying to like ramp up. And they all stream now because <laughs> you got to you got to do something. So they all have their streaming shows. Uh, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, oh, hey, this was the thing about masks that I wanted to say. It's nothing major. It's very minor. Um, one of the nice things about masks is uh, I've been cleaning a lot in this apartment. And, you know, you move a bunch of stuff and you don't realize how much dust was underneath it. Uh, having some masks around, it's been pretty nice for that. It's like, oh, cool, I'll just put my mask on. And make sure this thing, this part of the uh, apartment is cleaner than it was before. Worked out pretty good, yeah. It's been pretty pretty helpful to have, have some uh, face coverings. I've got a new mask coming that is a, a cloth mask, because I've been wearing a ventilator mask stuff. Uh, but I have a cloth mask that has adjustable ear straps uh, that I literally bought just for my flight. Uh, and so that it only exists for me flying um, because it'll be much more comfortable than other masks that I've been wearing. And I can also wear it over a mask and double mask up um, if I want to do that. 
because it's in, certainly not going to be it's you know it's a, more of a face covering than a full mask uh, but it should be tight around things because uh, it'll be adjustable uh, but I was like I want to get something something that's just for my flight uh, and then I'll just get rid of it or wash it and I, I won't get rid of it but I'll but it, it, it exists mainly for the flight. All right, we are basically body complete. We have the core lander we've got to put together, so we'll start doing that. But uh, this is a tall-legged uh, friend, uh, as is many kits from this era. Uh, if you don't know the crossbone, uh, it is from a manga. Uh, there is no anime adaptation. Uh, a figure of this kit was seen in the background um, of a, uh, Build Fighters. Uh, it's kind of like a it's, a, it's a space, you know, it's got a pirate-ish thing to it, the, the crossbone. Um, uh, it's, the X on its back is, uh, boosters for, because it's, uh, uh, piloting around Jupiter. And the, you can see here, uh, that the core fighter, the core unit, which is basically the cockpit that flies in the back, uh, has, uh, these boosters, uh, that then open up into the X, which is cool. Um... We got some stickers to put on here. We'll get to that after we get some building done of the core fighter. It's H3. Um, yeah, this is just like a cool design. It's just always been a cool design that I've been super into. Um, but, uh, you know, it, there's always been some love for it. Uh, I believe this has also been in some video game stuff, uh, but I am not super familiar with, like, the super uh, fighters and the various Gundam uh, video games, they've never really been uh, something that I've been super interested in, so I don't know a lot about that, um, but I do know that some people really, uh, that it has been in one of the games. That's, I think that's where people first saw it. Um, and it is, it is uh, the Crossbone has won a poll, I think twice, uh, um, of like most anticipated, you know, to be added to... Uh, series. There's some people that really want a version of it in uh, um, in build, even if it's not, even if it's just like a heavily modded version of it. There's some people that really, really like this kit, and I, I can understand why. It is a it is a impressive looking kit. Uh, it's got great colors. Uh, I think the blue, this like it's this navy blue. Is really nice. Uh, I'm kind of blowing out since I don't have a lot of light in here. Uh, I kind of overexposed a bit just to brighten up the build space. Um, but I think the colors do run through. You can see in the photo below me. Uh, hello, washable markers. Welcome. Uh, I, well, we're doing model kit building. I'm using my laptop because I uh, uh, mentioned in the stream earlier, I, I shipped out my, um, my desktop. Uh, so right now we're using the laptop and just kind of figuring stuff out. I'm in my roommate's old room because I have been heavily cleaning my own room and this was a good staging area for this stuff. Um, Y'all, I talked about this a little bit. I don't know if I got too into it on Monday. I miss my bed. Um, part of the move is that um, to, to save, to not have to get a super large storage space. Uh, I got rid of my bed that I've had for a number of years. It was a very large bed. Uh, and, uh, I am currently sleeping on a, a day bed, which turns into a couch. Now it is a nice day bed. Do not get me wrong. It's very low to the ground. Um, so that it doesn't have to be a super high cat. So it doesn't have to like, like drop down as a couch. Um, and, uh, it's fine. It's not been used that often and it'll be fine in the long run. Um, but right now I'm just like, not a big fan of that bed. It's fun. It's totally serviceable, but it's not my bed. I'm sleeping in the living room because that's where it is. Eventually, it'll be moved before I, I have to like move it out to in order to like put it in storage. But it's fine. Uh, the bed in the uh, spare bedroom that I am moving into in. Uh, in my parents' place, that is a that is a a firm mattress, I will say. So the, like that has been fine for when I visit it, but I'm like long term, couple months in, it's not going to be great. I might just get a um uh 
I might convince my folks that investing in a mattress pad is a sound investment for the future for when other people stay in that room when traveling happens again. That might be, it might be a hard sell, but I think I might be able to pull that, that off. Uh, if I can pull that off, that would be great because as I said, a bit rough. Um, the plan is for South Carolina, uh, my future home uh, for a while. Uh, I will just be, basically they have a long table, which I used for, for model kit building when I was staying there. Um, I used this laptop, which I'm using now, uh, and set up a stream, had a lamp going, did the overhead. Uh, it barely kind of fit in, so I'm gonna have to rearrange the room a little bit because basically I'm gonna make that like my normal area. And also I only had my laptop on there and then a little build area and I'm going to have two monitors and, you know, going to be using more space. So I'm going to have to move things around a bit. Um, the major thing is to make sure that my overhead like doesn't show the, uh, the base for my monitors, but it should be fine. And that, I think that's going to work out great, um, for those, for that purposes. Um, I think I think it, it should work out fine. Um, you know, I, I will miss having green screen stuff. I think that's all. It's always been nice to have that. I kind of miss it now, um, but you know, in the long run, it'll be okay. I'm gonna just move around some art in my parents' place and and get that going. Uh, and I have ideas for future stuff where when I eventually move back and find a new place, the idea is that I will be able to, uh, uh, wherever I end up, uh, here's the thing. I'm going to be able to build, I'm going to be able to set that place up with streaming in mind because that will be a thing that I will continue to do. Uh, streaming was not necessarily a thing I thought of when I moved into my apartment, you know, this apartment when I first moved in and I, I did to rearrange stuff, but like, I didn't, I never stopped to really set things up properly. I wish I had done that and I didn't ever. Um, but, uh, but now I'll be able to, you know, move into a place with the idea of like, okay, I'm going to put the shelves here and I'm going to put the bed over there. So the webcam never shoot, shoots the bed, but it'll, uh, you know, like it'll uh, pick this part up and oh, okay. And I'll do this. And then like, all right, now if I do that, like, okay, this will look good. And then I'll like have it so there's shelving behind me. And my shelving unit behind me where, is where I'll put like model kits that I've built. And because it'll be in shot, I'll have to make sure I clean that and it looks good. And I can even like dedicate a shelf to, you know, the, the boxes of stuff that were ready to go. And people can kind of like see in the background stuff we're going to work on in the future and that kind of thing. Like, I think that that's kind of exciting to to be able to like build a set a little bit around wherever I end up. Uh, and then eventually the idea would be that instead of this table that I'm using, uh, I would use um, an actual desk, like a computer desk that was that had enough room for me to like move stuff aside and my webcam is always where it should be. Um, one of the nice things about using this as a staging area uh, while I cleaned other things is I haven't uh, up until now, like the last few weeks or when I w was in here, I just set stuff up and left it the way it was set up. And that's been so nice instead of constantly converting because uh, what I have to do is I would have to uh, every day when I was doing a stream um, uh, in my old room, my old setup, I would have to pull the card, the, the, the folding table out set it up where I need to set it, put the green screen up, take my desk, like move the desktop over and then move the monitors from my desk to that space, set up this webcam over, line it up right, make sure my green screen, go, make sure the lights are in the right spot and do all that. And it was never, does like I, and I didn't leave it up because it kind of took over the room. Well, I don't need a computer desk that, uh, well, I do need a computer. One second is, uh, uh, I don't want a computer desk that also isn't my build space. 
So that's kind of like where I'm going to be looking at in the future. Uh, it's like how my dining room was never meant to be a home office. Yeah, watchable markers. Your dining room is supposed to be your dining room. And then you have a home office. And you can convert it into a home office, but you're probably not, you probably haven't converted it into a home office. You're probably just using it as a home office. And that's a different thing. So I never used my bedroom as my streaming room. It was my bedroom that I streamed out of. Because I never originally thought I was going to stream out of that. Uh, folks that have been here for a while know that uh, originally I, I was streaming uh, from an office. Oh, Harold is hosting the stream. Thank you, Harold. Appreciate that. Welcome, my friend. Uh, appreciate that as always. Uh, we are going to... No, we're, we're a little ways from a pause from the cause. So we're just building. I was going to say we're going to take a pause, but we're not. Um, in a bit, we will. Um, yeah, no. Uh, originally, I, I streamed uh, from an office. And so I would have to be very portable with all my gear and take all my gear with me. And then I started streaming from my living room. And then I started streaming from my bedroom. And then I invested in a green screen and got this table instead of using a small little table uh, that barely held anything. And then I got two monitors and I, I built a computer uh, for streaming and various other things. So I wasn't using my laptop and my old computer because my old computer setup def definitely wasn't going to let me stream. And I've like built it up over time. And I've been very pleased with, with how all of it's worked. But none of it has been, none of it was ever designed for what I'm using it for. So now I can do that. All right, so we are going to put some stickers on here. We got to put um, uh, let's see, this is got several stickers here. I'll do the front ones first. So we're just putting some stickers on the core fighter. There. And then we'll just fold it down. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I like the idea of being able to um, kind of build up uh, from the ground up like a new streaming setup. Like that's exciting to me. The idea of figuring out like what what that means and what that's going to be, uh, what, what that's going to look like, what, what a new streaming setup, both in South Carolina and then when eventually I move, like that's exciting. Uh, my roommate had a shelving unit that like, I don't know if it's Ikea, but it's, it's just this white unit with a bunch of squares. It's a big rectangle made up of smaller squares. And I was looking at it and I was like taking it apart to get rid of it. And I was like, you know what? I want to keep this shelving unit because I think it's going to like in the future, I'll, I can, I can take advantage of it. I can make use of it. And I think it's really going to help me in the future with the projects I want to do. So that's a thing that I can like, you know, use in the background and yeah, I can store stuff, but it can also like be a decorate decorative element. That sounds pretty good. All right. So we got to put got a couple more little, st little stickers here. Oh, they go in in this. Okay, I get it. Um, oh yeah. So so I had my birthday stream on Tuesday, and that went really well. I was really happy about that. That was very nice, very very fun. I'm glad everybody the people came out. If you missed it, it's on my YouTube and also uh, in a vod here on Twitch. And then I um I uh. So I did that, and that was really fun. And then yesterday, I had my birthday dinner because my birthday dinner was Domino's, and you know, like I I ate food that I really enjoy that's kind of trashy and whatever. It was, but it was good. But the idea was that I was going to get something that like I know I like and was fun uh, and tasty, but like very heavy because I got a medium thin crust bacon and onion pizza. And then also a whole order of cheesy bread. And I ate all of that. I ate some of the cheesy bread later. But most of it I ate all in one go. And, you know, 
I don't want to do that and then host a stream where I'm talking the whole time and making jokes and hanging out with my friends and uh, and celebrating my birthday that way. Like, that's not... That was not going to work to also then eat all of that. So I did it yesterday. Treat yourself, right? And I did. It was a great treat. Because, uh, like I said, I mean, I get really good pizza. And believe me, I'm eating very good pizza, like, I'm, tomorrow I'm going to eat very good pizza um, as I prep for uh, being able to uh, um, like say goodbye to some really good food for a while. I'm going to get some very good pizza tomorrow. But also, uh, like sometimes you just want to eat Domino's. And you just want to eat too much Domino's. And you just know you're going to eat too much Domino's. And you eat too much Domino's. That's just what life is sometimes. Sometimes life is eating too much Domino's and no knowing you're going to. Um, but then I just sat he- feel, feeling very heavy last night, and it was great. And I watched um, almost all of an anime that I'll talk about in the second hour, a show that I rewatched that I have not watched in a very long time. I mean, it's only five years old, but it's been a while since I watched it. I think I only, I watched it as it aired and then never watched it again. So that was fun. I'll talk about that in the second hour. It's a show that like has definitely aged oddly, I'll say. But, but yeah, we'll talk about it. Uh, I'm going to drink a little water here for a second. So apologies. Give me one second to have a little water. Put this back here. All right, that's good water, nice and cold. All right, so we got to put uh, put more of this together here. We need E eight and nine. The core lander is the next is the 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 biggest piece we have left to do. We will have weapons to complete, and there's a few of them. Um, this kit is a 2006 kit. Comes together pretty nicely. You know what, we're, uh, I don't know if you know what we're working on next. I've talked about it a little bit. We're working on the EZ-8 next. That's a 2000 kit. That hit kit has only a couple, but it does include screws. So that's one of the reasons why we always have a screwdriver. I have a little Phillips screwdriver here in my uh, tool kit um, for the times we work on some that era. Because this is, 2000 is the era of... Uh, hey, we can make this, we can make this, um, waist very flexible, but it's feeling kind of loose. Well, we'll put some screws in there because we haven't quite figured out how to tighten things up yet. Uh, it is an odd thing. It's not as bad as some perfect grades or some other master grades. Um, but it is, it is weird, uh, in that part of it. Uh, so we will have that to contend with. I like to say. All right, and then we're gonna put this. Gotta go. Go through that. It is a bit of an odd uh, element, but I'm looking forward to it. Um. Let's see. Just there. We'll put that there. Yeah, I'm look. I'm looking forward to to some odds and ends here. Uh. I'm doing a family thing on Saturday, and by family thing, I mean a Zoom that my cousin is setting up because my mom didn't understand. My mom was like, well, I want to do a Zoom, but I don't want to stop like some of the ones I'm in. And I'm like, okay, well, then you have to have someone with an account. And I let my pro Zoom account lapse because I haven't been using it. And also because they were like, we're we're not going to encrypt things. No, why will we encrypt things? And you're like, all right, well, get out of here. Um... But my cousin set it up. He's a little, he's like a year older than me. Um, but he set things up, which is great. Because it means that we uh, will be able to do it. And it's like a bunch of family members are going to be doing that. And that'll be good. Uh, hopefully everyone understands how to use it. If they don't, that's okay. We'll figure that out. But. Uh, what I'll end up doing is I'm going to move on Saturday. I'm going to like move this computer off so that I can be, well, I guess I can just 
turn this off and then put that there. Uh, that way I don't have to rearrange my setup. Or just pull, I mean, I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll pull my laptop forward because I won't have the overhead to worry about. I'll just pull my laptop forward. That's the ticket. And then I can uh, converse with my family members and celebrate my birthday that way, which is not the same as I would have liked. Like, I've said this, I wasn't going to throw a rager. I wasn't going to, like, paint the town. I wasn't going to, like, you know, get kicked out of some place. But also, I turned 40, and it's a little weird that, like, to do that in isolation. Now, part of that was that I uh, was was blessed, as I said, by having uh, lovely friends from different uh, eras of my life, of my of my internet life, primarily, uh, come in and be guests uh, for for the uh, Jackbox games. That was really fun. It was really nice, and I was really, really happy that people said yes, because it's just like Corey's a new friend, and Felix is, by the standards of the internet, an old friend, but not the oldest of friends. And it's like, and Harris is a new friend, and uh, Casey I've known for uh, for years and years now, uh, and Will I knew even before streaming stuff. Well, I started streaming just because of, of uh, Whiskey Media and us becoming like friendly um, from from that stuff and friends of friends and convention things. So it's like, yeah, I was able to like meet some cool people over the years and was really happy. Like I said, some new friends and was happy they were able to come hang out. Um, a little peek behind the curtain. You might like this. Um we ended that stream on Tuesday at like 10.40. At 10.50, because uh, I have the time code, um, a friend who was talking about wanting to do it but didn't fully give me, like, I couldn't understand if she understood that it was a stream or not because, like, it, she was just very vague about her responses to things. Uh, she joined my Discord, which is where I was running the audio from, uh, literally... 10 minutes after we stopped streaming. <laughs> and so I saw that later and I was like, oh, hey, yeah. Yeah, no. She's like, oh, I didn't understand. I thought you were like just gauging interest in people playing Jackbox. And I was like, well, I was, but it, it was for a stream. And I understand if people don't want to do that, but um, it was really fun. It was fun to just have. It was also just fun to have other people on the stream. I don't do that too often, as you know. Um, I've been thinking about like putting an ov open invitation out to some friends. Tuesday's room was fun. Thank you very much, Harold. It was a blast to, to do. I had so much fun um, uh, doing it and playing Jackbox stuff and having people on. Uh, I always said like, um, so we did, we did that one time. We did Smack Talk Showdown once with people. And then I did um, years ago, I did a, a, a road stream um, from my hotel room uh, at San Diego Comic-Con, and it happened to be the day that Aaron Trites was going to, to, to that. Um, so it was uh, really nice to have him as a guest. Uh, we'd planned it out, so that was the day he was going to like go and look at stuff because uh, his store hadn't opened at the time. I wish it had because then I would have been able to go to the store because I still haven't been because I haven't been back to San Diego. Um, but, uh, it was, you know, I haven't really had guests on, so I'm thinking that like, I don't know, that might end up being a thing we do. I don't know yet. Um, it might not, but it might be, but it might not, but it might be, uh, 30 hit me harder than 40, says Harold, uh, 30 didn't really hit me too, too hard. It hit me a little bit. I think actually the thing about 30 was that I threw myself a birthday party and it was poorly attended. And so, uh, that was, it was a lot of like yeses that then became maybes that then became actually I can't come. And uh, uh, what was supposed to be like a lot of people ended up being a few people. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to do birthday parties anymore. Um, uh, 40 is not as old as it used to be. So the rest of it, my weird 40 story, when my father-in-law turned 40, his wife rented a casket for the party. My own 40th birthday. See, yeah, I've, I've uh, uh, over the hill parties, like I've, been to not necessarily 40 but 50 uh when my mom turned 50 like they pulled some shenanigans on her 
uh, friends of hers, not me, because I'm not, I wouldn't do that to my mom. Uh, but yeah, no, there, there, there definitely been people who've like freaked out about it way more than I, than I was. Mostly it's just like, to me, 40 isn't really hitting me hard because 39 wasn't great because 2019 wasn't great and 2020 is not great. So that's really the, the real thrust of it is that like, it's mostly just, there are a lot of people in my life I don't see anymore because I can't and stuff that I wanted to do, I'm not doing like, you know, I mean, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pitch digitally for PAX West, but I'm not going to Seattle because it's not happening. Um, every year is the year that I can go to PAX Australia gets dangled in front of me and I don't think this year was going to be the year, but, you know, might have been. It might have worked out and been a thing I could do. But uh, but mostly it's just like, yeah, I just I would like to do cool shit. And that cool shit doesn't happen. And that's what's been affecting me. Especially the theme of every birthday party I've ever been to for my grandparents and aunts and uncles. Yeah, I just like, I think my generation is one of the, the first generations to just be like, you know, a lot of it's like our stunted youth and we're, but we're just pushing it. But it's also just like, yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't care. It's, you know what it is, honestly, and this sucks. And it, it, of course, that it's not the same. I'm not saying that everyone of two generations before me feel, didn't feel this way, but like, I'm never going to retire. So what does growing older mean? It should just mean that I have more experience in the jobs I'm doing. But it, it certainly doesn't mean that I'm like, oh, yeah, well, now you're only 12 years to retirement or now you're only 15 years to retirement. It's like, nah, that's not, that's not me. Couldn't be me. So now it's just like, whatever. Like, over the hill doesn't mean anything. I'm a 40-year-old person who is, um, in this time next week, will be in an Airbnb, two days into an Airbnb, uh, and then a couple days after that, will be at my parents' house, their retirement house, hanging out in their spare bedroom trying to figure out the next stage of my life, which arguably I probably should have done last year. When I got laid off last January and by the time that my severance was about to run out, I should have gave notice, moved to South Carolina and figured things out there. I didn't. I stubbornly said, you know, I will uh, go into a little bit more debt. I will... Um, uh, I will try a bunch of different other things. I will live off my savings and I'll find something else and I will make this work. And it wasn't working great, but it was working. You know, it was like, especially when I got Fios and I started being able to stream more consistently and better. And uh, this channel grew some. Um, that was good. And then it was like, okay, well now, what does that mean? And where do I go from here? Uh and then, of course, the pandemic and then all my safety nets kind of drizzled. And if I hadn't been laid off last year, I would have been at a job that uh, would have let me go in March. I would have been let go in March and I wouldn't have had a good severance then, probably would have had something. But they would have been able to weasel their way out of a bunch of things uh, because of the ongoing issues. And it would have been. A uh, very much a different style of thing. Uh, I'm happy if the work I did while I was here, uh, it would have been harder for me to do Anime NYC if I had been uh, in South Carolina to come up for that. It would have been harder. It would have been possible, but it would have been harder. It would have been harder to do a bunch of cool shit that I got to do last year. Um, it would have been easier in other ways. Certainly. But... Uh, 
for the most part, it was just a, uh, you know, I look back on it and I was like, there was a lot of good shit that I got to do last year into this year, but yeah, I probably should have made this decision a while ago. I'm glad I made this decision, decision now, but yeah, I probably should have done it last year. Especially with, like, one of the gigs I got, I could have done there. Like, you know, uh, T Public ended up being a, you know, month and a half instead of four months with with an extension that was, that was definitely coming. Like, that definitely didn't happen, and it's, that's fine. But I definitely could have done that from where I'm at. I don't know. I'm trying not to be melancholy about stuff, and I'm trying to, to figure out ways to, to stay positive about what's going on. Like I, I've said, I'm going to recharge my batteries. I am going to be with family, which I'm very excited about. I'm going to, uh, you know, I got my, my plans for getting a license, and a renewed, and or a new one, really, uh, and uh, getting some work in and figuring some stuff out, and then... You know, make the move to New York or we'll see what's up. Um, I joked about this, but uh, in February, I applied for a job or yeah, end of February, I applied for a job that was in Connecticut. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to move to Connecticut. I definitely would have moved to Connecticut and wish that job had happened and I would have been able to move to Connecticut. Oh, well. Say la vie, my friends. All right, we're going to finish this step, and then we're going to take a pause for the cost, and then we'll come back and put stickers on these things because these boosters need stickers, but we gotta, we'll gotta we put some things on them first. Got to do what you got to do. I mean, that's what it is, right? Like like I said, I'm, I'm thrilled that I'm able to continue uh, streaming uh, now, and I will be able to continue to stream uh, at my... Uh, 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 my folks' place, as I said, I do not know about the Airbnb. My hope is I will have my stuff with me, right? I will have things with me in order to be able to stream from there if I am able to. Uh, my hope is that I will be able to, and I will do two streams. I will say this. If I do stream, uh, it will be earlier than normal, and I apologize for that, but um, the Airbnb I'm staying at has quiet hours from 10 p.m. till 6 a.m. Now, while I'm certainly not, like, going to be blaring a TV, I do think that me talking from 10 p.m. Eastern until 11 p.m. Eastern might annoy somebody. So if I do stream, and because I, I won't know, it will be from 8 p.m. until 10 p.m., and I will end, like, at, like, 9.50 uh, p.m. Um, I don't love that, but it's still better than not streaming at all or doing, like, the afternoon. I don't want to do that. So I'll stream... Uh, you know, basically to the run up. Um, so it'll be an hour early those two days if I end up doing it. Um, I don't, I think the quiet hours probably just during the week. I feel like it's probably not on Saturday night, but also, as I said, I got a really good deal in this Airbnb because who the fuck is staying in an Airbnb in New York right now? But so it's a very good deal, but I also don't want to like blow the deal. I don't want to get in trouble. And deal with, I have to deal with that. All right, let's take a pause for the cause. Uh, if you are currently a subscriber, throw the bear cave, the leg of the scythe emote. If you're new to the stream, what's happening right now is I'm just going to talk about ways you can support the channel if you so inclined you are under no obligation to do so. But yeah, if you're a subscriber, you can do that. You can subscribe with cash money. You use uh, Amazon uh, the Prime. If you have Amazon Prime, you link it with your Twitch. You get Twitch Prime. You get a token you can use. Uh, renewing a subscription. Getting a subscription. Starting a new one. Gifting a sub. All unlock emotes because it is Pride. And we're still celebrating Pride here. Jam is here. Hello, Jam. Um, so you can do that to help celebrate uh, uh, Pride uh, and uh, uh, unlock some cool emotes. Also, if you... Bits and coins are always appreciated. If you do 300, you also unlock those things. Um, but any amount is great. Um, uh, we are towards the end of the month, and so we are always hopeful that people will renew their subscriptions. Um, as I said, gift subs are always great. Uh, we had a bunch of gift subs on Tuesday, as you can see in the leaderboards. 
uh, um, Silver Streak and uh, Toe Mega and, uh, and Dirty. Dirty's always giving out subs. Uh, it was really nice. Um, we're at, yeah, we're at almost our highest amount ever. I'm going to talk real briefly about ways to support the channel and then we'll get back to building. Um, so, uh, one of the ways you can support is you can join my Patreon. Now, this is towards the end of the month, so you might want to wait till next month to join my Patreon. But if you're like, ah, I can't give you $5 a month through Twitch, or ah, I don't subscribe to any Twitch channels. Well, there's a Patreon uh, that I have, and you can support at the $1, the $3, the $5, or the $10 tier. Uh, and there are different rewards for the different tiers and different things you get. Uh, they're going to start charging sales tax to some parts of the U.S., I don't know how that's going to affect people's streaming uh, and our, how, uh, giving, uh, and I'm sure I'm probably going to lose a few subscribers at the end of this month uh, on Twitch, some patrons, uh, and that's fine. I understand that. Uh, you can also uh, just, you know, uh, uh, a one time through my coffee, my Streamlabs, my PayPal, um, anything I get from Twitch, from uh, Patreon, from uh, my uh, coffee and my Streamlabs and my PayPal that come in during the stream, go to me buying kits and equipment. Uh, I shouldn't need too much equipment when I get down there, but I might want to, like, buy a, a clip lamp to, like, throw some light behind me in the room that I'm in because I'm going to be there for a while. Uh, I have to constantly buy new kits. I do have a pretty good amount, and I know a few people have bought some stuff they're sending to to um, where I'm at, but it, it always helps me. In order to, to like, hey, one of my monitors might not make it uh, to South Carolina or both of them. I packed them very well. It might not work out. And if it doesn't, I'll get new monitors. Uh, we'll, I'll make it work. Uh, I do have an Amazon wish list uh, and that will get sent to South Carolina. So it'll actually get there, uh, you know, depending on Amazon Prime. Uh, some people have already bought stuff on my wish list, but I changed it over early to avoid uh, any issues. Uh, and I have a bunch of stuff on this wish list, some Lego sets, some model kits, uh, various things. Um, and anything you buy on that there actually will jump a queue. So I have some stuff that I'm building here. Uh, but in the future, when I get down to South Carolina, um, I will uh, I will take whatever came in the mail. Because I know a few people have sent some stuff, which is very nice of them. And uh, yeah, that'll jump the queue and I'll build that stuff in, in, in that order. Um that is a, a way to support. You can also buy a um, a gift card to USA Gundam Store. You get a code in the in uh, in your email, buying it there, and then you can whisper me here on Twitch or send me a DM on Twitter um, and be like, "Hey, I bought this. Here you go. Uh, here's some gift cards." And then I'll use that to probably pre-order something um, or buy something from USA Gundam Store and then have it shipped to me, and then I'll build it on stream. Um, that's another way to support me. Uh, I have a Discord. Uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube, all this is in the show description. If you're watching the VOD, check the uh, chat because I'm putting this all in the chat in the VOD. Uh, I have a Discord. Join my Discord. It's cool. I think you'll like it. Um, uh, it's very chill. I post stuff that I'm working on. People post things they're working on. It's all very nice um, and pretty laid back. And then uh, I have a couple of videos for you to watch. On Monday, I put up uh, Pet Bears Anime Club, which I make every two weeks, where I uh, every week I look at a, uh, a topic in the world of anime. This was my, uh, I listed my two favorite shows of the spring season, which is just ending now, and two shows that were on hiatus that I can't wait to come back. And I've heard one of them has a date. It's coming back in the end of July, apparently. Uh, and the other one still has not referenced if it's come, when it's coming back or if it's coming back. But these are the ones that I hope to see. And then yesterday, I put a video up. Uh, we won't get into it right now. We might get into it, but we won't get into it at this moment. Uh, the world of wrestling is is dealing with itself right now, and we support that, and we, we support people that are, are speaking out. Um, so I made a, a bearing the list of a wrestler, and I made it last week. And this wrestler, there are no issues that I know of. Um, really what happened was last week I made a video, uh, or for last week I made a video about Orange Cassidy and his ring gear, and then that night, the night, the, the night I put that video out, he wore a new piece of ring gear. So this week I took that, uh, and so for this week I like, uh, you know, I updated. I took that new outfit, put it in there, made sure it, we're all on the up and up now, 
Um, because I had to. I had to update it for everybody. So that's that. Um, all right. So I'm going to get uh, back to building, and we're going to talk about anime that came out. Uh, uh, one show that came out, uh, new, the last episode happened yesterday, and then one show that happened this season that I just finished watching, that I was watching outside of talking about it every week, and then one show that uh, is an old show. So a little bit of everything. I'm going to drink a little water, and then we'll get back to building and keep working uh, on uh, on this, on the old crossbow. Ah, water. It's very good. Okay. So we got to put uh, a bunch of stickers on here. Uh, these are all the uh, the the uh, X's here, so we got to put a bunch of stickers on this, and we'll do that. Um, so, uh, Tower of God, episode 13. Uh, this is, hey, why why was Raquel, why did Raquel do this? Like, this was a, a plan that several people had. Uh, she is definitely a pawn in this scheme. But, okay, so the thing that we knew, that we knew going into this show, um, this is a story about a tower. It's a fighting tower. You get to the top of it, get whatever you want. There's some people that live outside the tower that know what's going on. There's some people that live outside the tower that don't know what's going on. Um, and uh, our hero, uh, Bam, or Ban, uh, doesn't really know what's going on in the world. Has amnesia, may have a bigger story in his life. We don't know. We do know that he's got Raquel, which is the person that saved him. On all intents and purposes, as far as he's concerned, she went out of her way to be good to him and look out for him. Well, she's got a dream. She wants to climb the tower. And we find out she didn't get called to the tower. The tower didn't want her. They wanted him. So she answered the call. But he didn't. But it's that's not the right reason. So him being an irregular, someone who... Uh, isn't chosen but chooses is actually inaccurate. We thought this whole time that he was an irregular. He's not an irregular, um, for say. But there's this this big conspiracy that's happened. This whole thing, uh, basically, either she's not a nice person and never has been, or she was easily corrupted to be jealous of this little guy that she didn't give any consideration to. It turns out to be pretty damn special. Um, but she's jealous of him and to get what she wants, he can't get he, what he wants. She has to replace him as the main character. Uh, and so a bunch of people get betrayed and a bunch of people get fucked over and it's not the end, but it might be the end. And I'll say this tower of God. It's an okay anime. Is it my favorite of the season? No. Will I watch the second season of it? Yeah. When there's more episodes, because I'm assuming it was popular enough. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe this will be it. And we'll never hear about Tower of God ever again. And people I know who like the webtoon will tell me, oh, yeah, well, they really ruined it. Uh, you got to read the webtoon. And uh, and I won't because uh, I didn't like it that much. Um, but I'll watch it again. You know, set the next season of it, when it whenever that comes back out. Yeah, all right. I probably will. Uh, so that's Tower of God. I don't know. Like I said, um, I thought the uniqueness of it, of it not being a chase the entire time, because I assumed that's what the show was going to be, was surprising. Um, and I think the betrayals were handled pretty well. Uh, but it is, it's just fine. Now, a show that I recommend, but you got to be in a good mood. You got to be not in a good mood, the right mood for this, is Yesterday, is Sing Yesterday for me. Uh, this is a drama. Um... It reminded me a bit of Honey and Clover, uh, only there's not, it's not as arty of, uh, as a show, um, but it is, it is a coming of age slash uh, have already come of age story uh, about some characters and their romantic futures and their romantic presence and their, so, in some instances, tragic past. 
Uh, it's really well animated. Um, I did not watch it week to week. I just watched it um, over the weekend or over this week. I've watched every episode. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think it handles its topics very well. I think it's uh, beautifully uh, animated. Um, it is a sad show. Uh, and that's the point. It's a drama. Um, it might not be your cup of tea. You may look at Sing Yesterday for me and watch a couple episodes and be like, nah, I'm good. I'm not in the right mindset for this. Uh, I'm not in the right, you know, like frame of, frame of mind for it. Or this just isn't doing it for me. It's not interesting, whatever. It, it might not work for you. It worked for me. I don't know. This was not a show that I wanted to watch week to week. I watched the first episode and went, I think I'm probably going to marathon this instead. I'm glad I did because I don't think that I would have enjoyed it as much week to week. Um, but uh, I really enjoyed what I now, now that I've watched it. Uh, the, the voice acting is really well done. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of love to it. The soundtrack is really good. Um, it, yeah, it's a quality show. Um so I highly recommend uh, that if you're looking for a uh, uh, a show to marathon and you don't mind a little bit of drama in your life and a little bit of sadness in your life, uh, I think you would do you could you could stand to, to have a little of uh, sing yesterday for me. It's, a, it's on Crunchyroll. It's really good. Now uh, I, I said that I revisited an anime. I revisited a show that is, uh, I believe it, I don't know if it's still on Crunchyroll. I watched it on Funimation because I found that it was on Funimation. Uh, and it was, a, I believe, a 2015 anime. Um, don't quote me on that fully, but I believe that that's 2015. Um, uh, it's called Samurai Flamenco. Um, and I haven't watched it all of episodes, but I, I'm rewatching it. I watched it all previously before, and I, I'm in a rewatch mode. I'll probably continue the rewatch and finish it all for Saturday because uh, I think I want to watch the last episode tonight. That anime was great uh, and weird as fuck. Yeah, Christian, it's really great. So, um, basically, a, a model whose parents were murdered. Uh, it is on Crunchyroll. Okay, thank you, Christian. Yeah, I knew that it was on Funimation, and I think it was originally on Crunchyroll as well. Uh, a long time ago, a dude's parents uh, were murdered, and he uh, ends up becoming a model, but he's always had a sense of justice. Literally, one of his names means justice, and he wants to become a superhero. He has no superpowers. He has he doesn't have like he has some wealth, but he doesn't he do no, he's he's not Batman. But he wants to basically become a superhero. And uh, and it starts off kind of like, oh, what does that mean? And what does it mean to be Samurai Flamenco? And okay, well, he's got, um, he's got, uh, there's a police officer who knows his secret. And then there's another person who knows his secret and figure out how does that work? And what does that mean? And all of that, like, what, what's this show going to be? And it, some of it is a comical representation of what this means. Um, okay, so we're taking our core. Our, here's our core fighter. And then we're going to bend this part down. And then we're going to take this. So we take this down. Pull this up. Gonna. Hmm, sorry. Turns around. Oh, what happens here? No. Oh, okay. That, that pops up. All right. Sorry, hold on a second. Sorry. Um. Uh. So it's figuring that out, and it's kind of comical, and it's kind of silly. But then, like, it's not just do. It's not just like. Uh, like muggers. And you know, and like bank robberies. There are monsters, and there's a person creating monsters, and there's an evil organization that needs to be defeated, and it suddenly, like, becomes kind of real. Like, it becomes, like, kind of, 
Like there's a rea- it, it gets weirder and weirder, and there's a second half of it, and it kind of goes places, and it it's changed it changes up its vibe, and it becomes a bit of a different show, and sometimes I'm not quite sure what story it wants to tell, and if it knows what story it wants to tell, um, but it's really interesting, and I'm super into it, and it yeah yes Christian says it gets dark, and it does get dark, and. The other characters that are in the story end up with, like, some real shit happens to them. And it it is not like... It's not One Punch Man. It's not One Punch Man. Um, it, is, it is a bit more kick-ass than One Punch Man in that the... Uh, the repercussions for these actions, the the reality of what this thing means, but it's not a, it's not a trying to be a grim dark show. It's not doing the like, oh, did you didn't you realize that this was fucked up? It's not necessarily doing that, but it is doing like it is like aware that it is telling a weird story, and that it is a weird show. So. I don't know. There's there's a lot going on. I really like it. Um, I think it's like a really good, strange show uh, that I'm super into. And I think that like... Yeah. I think it's worth your time. Um, and it is a, a quality piece of entertainment. Alright, so now we're going to put it there. But yeah, it gets dark. So that, yeah, that's that show. Samurai flamenco, uh, but yeah, it it, it um, there are there are repercussions and there are consequences for doing what uh, he does and the people that he gets involved in his shenanigans and his life. What they also have to do, um, there are there are just repercussions to it. Okay, cool. So I I didn't fold this up properly. Now I have folded this core unit up properly and it will slide in and then there we go so now you can see that there inside the chest piece there is the cockpit is there and now you can see the X which is the booster rockets and you can turn them like this and now he's got boosters you can boost but yeah uh, Samurai Flamenco if you missed it I think it's worth checking out it's worth your time um, I think it is a pretty neat show. Um, what are y'all up to? What, what are you, are y'all watching anything? You got any YouTube that you're like, you you got your new YouTube things that you're, you're totally into and you can't, you're just like going through all the backlogs. I've got my like return to things, um, things that I've watched in the past that I'm watching again. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Try Guys, um, uh, Keith Eats the Menu. Because those are just fun and sometimes gross, but mostly just fun. So I've been watching a lot of Eats the Menu and enjoying that. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know if y'all are watching anything. Um, you know, there's not a lot of new out there. So, you know, it's like what people are revisiting, what people are finding their, their joy in. I like, I like to hear it, so... Let me know. Uh, I stumble. I sub to CBS All Access to watch Cora. Heck yeah. Enjoy that. Uh, oh, uh, we've got a new host. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Carbon Dobbs, for host of the stream. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. Always, always uh, nice to have hosts. Um, uh, I'm working on finishing the last season of she which is great. Lord Crashington, the last season of she is very good. Uh, enjoy. Yeah, that's a, that is a solid uh, close to that season. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, yeah uh, hosting and raids are things that we always appreciate around here. Uh, when people can do it, we're, you know, it's great. If they can't, they're not. Uh, Harold says, Cora, that's an odd spelling of Star Trek. I mean, also, if you have CBS All Access... You also have lots of Star Trek access. So if that's something that you're into, Lord Crashington, you now have some availability to watch some stuff. If you want to watch Picard or um, 
Discovery, you can. Uh, in, and enjoy. Uh, we're putting together the weapons. Um, this thing... This thing's got like a cutlass and uh, and basically like it's got it's got a pirate theme, right? It's got this pirate theme, so its weapons are part of this pirate theme, which is fine, and I I don't have a problem with that because it means that it has a beam weapon that is strange. Uh, I have the Verka version. Yeah, so this is the Verka. Uh, this is the two thousand six. Uh, version um, of this kit. Uh, this has been a fun little build. A little, some weirdness here and there, but for the most part, uh, totally accessible and fun. Um, but yeah, this thing's got some weird weapons that I do like putting together. I didn't need that part there. Um, but basically, it's got like a cutlass, a beam cutlass. I like that. Last brick says, I'm not much of a uh, Star Trek person. I understand. Uh, Christian, the OG Star Trek was pretty dang horny. Um, it was, uh, you know, and that was definitely a way to, uh, appeal to, to people that weren't sure that this was something that they were going to like, because I mean, it is, uh, the show is a sci-fi show that is shot like a, like the stylized, like a Western and the audience, it took a while for an, for an audience to be like, I like this. This is for me. Uh, it took them a bit to, to get on board. And uh, yeah, I found the sword doesn't stay in the hand well. Yeah, I'm, uh, uh, I'm sure. These hands are not great, uh, but that's okay. Uh, it just needs to look cool in a photo at the end of our build, honestly. Uh, and it, if it can look cool in that photo, I'm gonna be pretty happy. But yeah, I, I like the I like the saber. You know me, I like a wep I like you know like a big big weapons and weird weapons and unique weapons. That's part of the the thing I like the most about. Sorry, kits like this is ones that just have style and are going for something a little different. I'm always with that. Uh, they also filmed a lot of leftover sets or westerns. Yes, yeah. Lord Crashton, uh early Star Trek has a lot of. We landed on this weird desert planet, and we're gonna fight this lizard man. I guess. But uh, you know, not the end of the world. Uh. They did what they had to do. They, they did what they needed to do and what they had to do with the money they had and the budget they had and the time that they had to get that done. And as I said, it wasn't like it was an immediate hit. So they had to work pretty hard. And then they did. And people were like, yeah, you know what? Star Trek. And then Next Generation took a little while to find its hole, but Next Generation did very well eventually. Because uh, it was syndicated, but it took a little while for uh, some of the some of the places in the in across the U.S. and in other parts of the world didn't put it on at times that were helpful. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. It took a little while, depending on the regions, for it to take hold, and eventually it did take hold with lots of people. Uh, but also, you know, the story as the story goes takes a little while for Star Trek The Next Generation to get great. It's good, per, you know, pretty early on, but it does take a little while to get great. Uh, Next Generation, you want to wait for Riker's beard to grow in. Deep Space Nine, you want to wait for Cisco's to shave his head. Uh, those are your general, in uh, uh, your general, like, uh, points where things get great. Are there good episodes in both shows before that? Yes. But is that when things really kick off? Hell yeah. Uh, Lord Crashington, the Star Trek that has Muppets. Do you mean Pigs in Space? Or do you mean Farscape? 
Um, think you might mean Farscape? Because that does that, that is those are monsters made by the Jim Henson Corporation. Uh, but yeah, there are no big puppets in anything. There's lots of people in makeup in a lot of Star Treks, but as far as puppet stuff goes, uh, yeah, maybe you might be thinking of Farscape because that does have a big puppet alien. Uh, done by the Jim Henson Corporation. So maybe that's what you're thinking of. I don't know. Uh, yeah, because there aren't really puppets in Star Trek. Lots of makeup. Lots of characters in makeup. Some CG stuff, certainly. But Alright, so we finished uh, we finished our gun. And now let's build our uh, our um our cutlass here. Um, yeah, if there's anything else y'all are you're watching, let me know. I, um, certainly. Uh, oh, uh, Twisted, Twisted was here, is here, and said, my MG uh, cutlass arrived yesterday. Hell yeah, I, I saw that. I have not ordered that um, because I've been kind of just doing... Um, I mean, I'm moving, so I'm trying to be careful with money, but really I've just been pre-ordering stuff that like things I've been purchasing on my own dime lately have been pre-orders for things that are coming out in the future uh, and kind of just looking at it like that. Uh, so that was not a kit that I've bought yet, um, but I'm certainly keeping my eyes on it. Um, on Monday, we did a pre-order here because, you know, a premium Bandai was doing pre-order stuff. Um, so we, uh, I ended up getting the, uh, the Endless Waltz Master Grade for the Ultron Gundam, uh, the Nautiku, uh, which I'm very excited about because that is a really cool kit. Uh, and I haven't, um, so we've built the Tall Geese 3 Master Grade that was like hard to come by. And then we bought, we built the high grades of the ones that had master grades that were like very limited and then now are like hundreds of dollars. Hi, Silver Streak, welcome. So we built the ones that were like hundreds of dollars that were hard to come by. Um, we built the uh, high grade version of that, the Ultron, the Heavy Arms, and the Sand Rock. And now those are all available for uh, master grade versions, all came in pre-order. And I was thinking about it, and I wasn't sure what we were going to do, but we ended up with the Ultron. Uh, we, we got the one kit from that, and I'm looking forward to building that, because that is a beautiful looking kit. If you haven't seen the uh, Endless Waltz Ultron, it is beautiful, um, old looking, wonderful green. It really does go for the, the Luck Dragon kind of vibe. Um, and it's a great kit that I'm really looking forward to doing. I think the Heavy Arms Endless Waltz is fantastic, but uh, that was the other one that I might I might have gotten. Um, but yeah. All right, so that goes on there. And now, look at this. Look at these blades. Look at this. Look at this blade here. Ridiculous. Um... The shoulder, uh, Vul the Vulcans that are on the shoulder are actually the blades for the uh, saber. Uh, there's a few other things that we can do here. Uh, also, the um, you can combine the this gun with the saber thing to make a different weapon if you want to do that. But I mean, this cutlass is fantastic. It's not gonna, we're not gonna, it's not gonna hold well. So it won't look good for photograph. It might look okay for photographs, but yeah, this is like such a great looking thing, but we're going to keep that for photos looking as it looks because I think it just looks so neat. Put these, oops. Um, yeah, that just looks cool. This looks fine. You can put this, uh, if you want, you can put this on the, 
go like that, and then that goes like this. You can put that on the, we'll put this on the waist here. Yeah, this is a good looking kit. There, so that just goes there, and that goes like that. But we won't put that there. That can't go there, but we'll put there. All right, so we got our weapons here. We've got a few more weapons we could put together. Uh, let's, uh... So, we've got a knife that we can put on here. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar, it's got the leg, one of the leg things here pops out. And then that becomes a knife. But also, so we, we do this, right? You want you want to, you know, have your knife blade. Make your knife happen. Get yourself a knife. Uh, you also pre-order the perfect grade unicorn. Oh, wow. Wow, Twisted. Uh, that's awesome. Um, I've built the perfect grade in a while. Those are great. Uh, I do want to point out that you can also take this knife blade and you can put it on the foot if you wanted to so you could have a foot blade you could just have a knife blade on your on your foot there that's a thing you can do we're not gonna but you can do that and that is great and nonsensical in a way that i always love i love that that is a thing you can just do all right so we got that we got that oh then also this thing can come up oops this can come up like this and then we can put cool things on that if we want tactical foot blade indeed uh, we probably uh, so I think that what's going to happen is I'm going to finish up all these weapons and show you all these weapons that we can make um, cause that's cool. Um, but we won't do the, uh, the last thing that we have to do is, uh, is, um, the cloak. Oh, we can get started, but I'm not going to worry about getting it together. Cause I really got to look at these instructions cause that somewhat doesn't make sense in a way that I'm like, I don't quite know how this is supposed to go. Got to roll some fabric around. Basically, there's a there's a fabric cloak here, and we could put that on our kit if we wanted to. But I'm not at the moment necessarily interested in doing that, so we won't do that yet. But uh, let me try to get this out. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that. So, but yeah, we'll put this thing on here. Play of these go like this. Yeah. What this does, I don't remember from the show. Or from the manga. Oh yeah, it's got this thing. Uh it's like X twenty three, yeah. <laughs> um Oh yeah, there's also this like whip thing that we can make. This has a lot of weapons. It's very fun in how many weird weapons it has. Uh, uh, it's got like an extendo arm and not extendo arm, but like a grappling arm and a bunch of nonsense. But yeah, it's got this wire here. We want you to snip. We'll just snip some of it. We don't need all of it. Yeah, that's about right. But you got this wire here that can grappling onto things. And uh, one of the side pieces comes off and can clamp onto stuff. And it's this a whole thing that's happening here. Well, we can try to figure out this uh, cloak. Uh, 
But yeah, we got a lot of weapons here. So I'm going to take a photo with all its weapons. Uh, and then I will try to figure out uh, the cloak for a couple minutes. But if we can't get it, we'll, we'll I'll wait till Saturday. Uh, which is the next build stream. So I took that. Okay, so. Uh, did I cut some of this off? This goes down like this. Like that. And then these go like this. These go up like that. I might have to go and look online about how to do this cloak because, you know, this is the 2006 kit. So the instructions are not, are okay, but they're not great for non uh, kanji readers. So there's at least one like this double sided tape. Or... So yeah, it's not, it's not the best instructions in the world. I'm trying to figure out here because there's definitely like you take this part and you have to roll part of it up. Do you have to cut that to roll it up? Yeah, because there's this part here. I don't know. There's some instructions here that I'm like, I don't know what this wants for me. Here's the cloak, as you can see there. It also wants me to like cut part of this out, I think. I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Like that's just not happening. Um, like I said, I might just, I'm going to play around with it for a bit here, but this might be a thing that we figure, like I, I look at and do some research for on, and then I like totally get what's going on on Saturday. I think I just did this. And then... Yeah, I'll go like that. Kind of open this up some. Yeah. All right. And then. Hmm. You're looking forward to the Testament Gundam. Yeah. Well, that did look cool. Uh, as I said, I am kind of been focused on uh, some of the stuff from Endless Waltz uh, that was released, the premium Endless Waltz stuff. That has kind of been where a lot of my interests lie because uh, it's just shit I love. Uh, all right, I don't know how this is supposed to go. It's like this. This isn't right, but it's okay. <laughs> There's some sort of snapping thing mechanism here. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so if it goes like this, put that there, and then this goes like that. Hmm. 
All right, this is not looking great, but it it I'm not going to worry about it. You know what? I'm literally not going to worry about it. I don't care enough. It's got a cloak. That's cool. I can't figure that out. We finished this Gundam. I'm happy to say that we finished this Gundam and that it was a fun build uh, with a lot of cool stuff in it. And we're going to call it there. And I think that's okay. Because the instructions are not great and I am not worried about that. Uh, this was the Verka, so it did come with some alternatives, some other ways to, to, you know, some of the older stuff in this kit. If you want to do that, uh, you could. Um, this is a cool looking kit that I'm happy that we finished with. Uh, on Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern, I will be back here streaming and we will be working on the Testament. Not so Testament. Uh, sorry, I got confused because of that. Um, we'll be working on the EZ8. Uh, uh, preview is that it's this. The EZ8 is what we'll be working on Saturday. Uh, this is an old school, uh, it's a 2000 uh, kit, the year 2000. Um, it's a kit that I just, I've never built. Even my pre streaming days when I was a model kit builder, I just never built this kit. I'm very excited to do it. Uh, I think it will be a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you'll tune in Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, for that, we are going to go ahead and raid uh, somebody else. Um, I don't know who we're going to raid yet, but we're going to go and uh, I'm going to go see who's around and we'll find someone awesome to go uh, to go and uh, check out. Um, but I have to see who that is and then we will go and give them a, a look see. Uh, thanks so much for everybody who hung out tonight. Always a pleasure uh, to have folks here in the chat. Um, Let's see. Uh, oops. Sorry. I got a thing there. Uh, oh, um, we're going to go hang out with uh, Kate. Kate Stark is a fantastic person. If you don't know Kate, uh, get on board. Uh, uh, Kate rules. And um, we will go give Kate a... Uh, a um, Oh, there she's playing uh, battle. Or what's she playing? She's playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. She's very good at it. So we'll go check that out. Uh, again, thanks everybody who hung out with tonight. Um, hope to see you uh, in the future. Uh, Silver so Shakes, I gotta mention, I dig this banner. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, why not, right? We're mixing things up a little bit. Uh, I learned how grouping works, so I'm happy about that. Uh, Harold says, somebody give me uh, a sub to your channel there. That's awesome. Have a good night, everybody. Hope to see you on Saturday. If you want to come on the raid, please do. If not, see you next time in the next Build with Bear uh, in the future. Goodbye. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.